When I get a sports game, whatever story mode it comes with is generally low on my list of priorities. But it's an undeniable reality of sports games these days, and since we'll never be moving away from the yearly release schedule, I guess the best we can hope for is at least an average story mode. And now that I've played both FIFA's Volta story mode and WWE 2K20's My Career mode one after another, the question of how to make an actually tolerable story mode has been on my mind. If you've watched the Volta series, you know why. So today, I've decided to take on that very question with the very good WWE My Career and the very bad Volta story mode as references. How do you make a good story mode in a sports game? So first off, we're showing WWE 2K20's My Career and FIFA 20's Volta Story Mode gameplay from the first few hours of the games, so no spoilers. Let's start out with the most relevant games that we're talking about, those two, and the differences between the story modes. Again, WWE's being very good, Volta's being not so very good. So the first thing that I noticed is branching storylines, or at least some kind of choice that WWE offers you and it, and it does change the gameplay. The first thing that I think of is you get an opportunity uh, relatively early on to sign with BCW exclusively. And so if, if you take that option, then suddenly you get transported like 10 years into the future and your, your two characters are just kind of wallowing in BCW, which has 10 fans per show or something like that. And so it's really cool. And so after you do a little bit there, it, it takes you back and it has you do the choice again and then you choose not to do that. So it's just kind of cool. It's it's It offers some replayability beyond just customizing your characters and all that. There is some replayability in the story itself. The other thing is checkpoints within the game. Volta had a real problem with this because every single thing that you did was a tournament. So if you lost at any point during a tournament you were playing, you had to go back and replay the entire tournament over again. So it leads to really an artificially long experience when it comes to Volta, not because the actual story ex itself is long or there's hours of cutscenes, it's just because when you're playing on a hard difficulty, sometimes you lose and then you have to go back and replay everything. And if you turn down the difficulty, then the game becomes not as fun. So why would you play it in the first place? The thing about WWE's My Career modes, at least for this year and the previous couple years, is that you only at most have to replay one match if you lose or if you don't complete an objective, which is tolerable. Certainly, probably the best way to do it. Uh, the main characters when it comes in the story. If you can actually tolerate them and you actually care about what they're doing, and I will admit that when it comes to WWE 2K20's mode, at first they, they come off as people that you don't particularly like, but they grow on you as the story progresses because they actually get a backstory fleshed out so you know who they are. Whereas in FIFA, you have a situation where you don't know your main character's backstory until like the second to last cutscene in the game and then they just drop something on you and you're like, okay, but I don't really care anymore. The characters also are consistent, whether it's your main characters, whether it's the main antagonist of the story, which I'm gonna get to in a second, or it's just the periphery characters, they act consistently. And one thing that WWE does really well is it brings in a lot of current wrestlers to voice parts of the story. So it just lends itself to realism and, and to getting you in, invested because it's the real voices of these wrestlers that play characters. And then of course the antagonist. No story is complete without a hero and an antagonist. And the antagonist, if you've watched the My Volta series, you know that I cannot stand the quote unquote antagonist in the Volta series. And when it comes to WWE, the antagonist in that game is almost cartoonishly evil <laughs> for a game about wrestling. And you know what? That's okay. It's okay for a reason that I'm going to get to. I don't mind if your antagonist is just a cartoon, some kind of caricature of a villain. That doesn't bother me. So before we move on, I just want to cover a couple more games that have story modes that I've played that I didn't like. To be honest with you, WWE 2K20's My Career is far and away the best story mode in any game that I've played to date. 
It's a low bar admittedly, but if you've played any of these games, hopefully you can see what they might have in common with some of those things I just mentioned uh, about Volta story and about WWE 2K20's My Career. The first journey in FIFA, which I believe was FIFA 17, uh, NBA 2K16 with that story done by Spike Lee, the first Madden long shot, all of these games had the same flaws as Volta Story, and they didn't feature the best bits of WWE 2K20's My Career. But how do you avoid falling into the same traps as all these games I've mentioned? They're all on a yearly development cycle, but by putting a story mode into their games, they're going to be judged the same as any other video game with a story mode, which is basically all video games that come out. But those games take years to develop, not the nine months that these games get. I mean, think about something like Cyberpunk that's coming out in, in 2020, Cyberpunk 2077 where we're going to be judging its story mode exclusively, that game has been in development for almost a decade. These games, these sports games get nine months, and yet somehow, WWE 2K20 did a really good job, and even WWE 2K19 had a solid enough story to get the job done. I should mention, when it comes to Volta story mode, when it comes to WWE story mode, I put about 15 hours, 10 or 15 hours into Volta Story, which was about 10 or 15 hours too much. When it comes to WWE 2K20, 30 hours into that story mode. And that was without, I didn't even do most of the customization. I didn't really change my move sets or anything like that. In WWE 2K19, which was the first WWE game that I really played, I put in over 50 hours into that my career because I was doing the customization and the movesets and everything. Now the fact that those games are wrestling gives, it, gives them a certain advantage over other sports because wrestling fans are conditioned to accept and expect certain things when it comes to storytelling. But we as gamers are also willing to accept certain things. And if FIFA or Madden want to step outside of the box and tell weird stories, gamers, I believe, are very much willing to indulge them in that. I don't believe that gamers are expecting just straight realism when it comes to their stories. So when it comes to telling good stories in sports games, I believe there are two paths to travel, so to speak. You can play it safe and tell a very by the numbers traditional sports story. We all love those when it comes to movies like The Natural, The Sandlot, Rudy, The Warrior, etc. Or, you go over the top with crazy stuff and let us have fun. The latter option, of course, is the higher risk, but I believe it's higher reward, i.e. I would recommend you try WWE 2K20's My Career Mode, even given all the problems with the game as it stands. And again, gamers will forgive many things if we feel there's innovation and risk-taking, and we don't expect complete 100% realism. At the same time, if you do that wrong, then you get too far away from even a semblance of a coherent story and you get something like Volta Story Mode, which feels like each cutscene was directed by a different person and all of them had different writers that were writing different stories. So when it comes to constructing a good story mode in games, it's actually very simple. Know what you have. If you have great writers and people that tell great and unique stories, like what the WWE 2K20 developer seems to have, then tell great stories. If most of your resources have gone to constructing a great game in terms of gameplay, which I believe was the case of FIFA 20, then just put together a paint by number story and step out of the way and let us play the game. EA did not do that and it shows. Now, none of this is to say that if you make a poor game, a story mode can save that. A bad story can certainly make it worse though. NBA 2K16's absolute train wreck of a story mode filled the grave of an already troubled game. So step one, of course, is to create a great game. But when it comes to stories, know what you have, know where your strengths are. And if you're comfortable, take a few risks. Ideally, I'd like sports games to leave a couple years between games with a story mode so that they can set aside a team to work on their stories in the background. But if we're going to have a fleshed out story mode every year with every release, I would humbly ask that it doesn't do such a poor job that I lose all desire to play the game in the first place.